Formal education was introduced in Kenya by the colonialists. One thing that stood out among those who were pioneers in receiving formal education was their ability to get white-collar jobs, which earned them handsome remuneration. This motivated parents to enroll their children in school, especially after our country gained independence. Over the years though, with the high number of students graduating from tertiary institutions and universities, getting jobs in the formal labor market has become an uphill task. Many young graduates have had to wait for a long period of time before getting formally employed. Nevertheless, there is a ray of hope. A program offering practical training on entrepreneurship has been introduced in three Kenyan universities, Kenyatta University KU, Mount Kenya University MKU, and Strathmore University. It is known as STEP, an acronym for Student Training for Entrepreneurial Promotion. Offering a practical and enjoyable approach on entrepreneurship training, STEP's brainchild was Professor Michael Fries, with the support of a team from Leuphane University of Lundberg, Germany. Founded in 2006, the group joined hands with Makerere University Business School and Uganda Christian University. In Africa, STEP is currently being offered in Kenya, Uganda, Liberia, Tanzania, and Rwanda. It has also been rolled out in Asia and Latin America. The program has 12 modules which are offered within a period of 12 months. It is conducted by a group of trainers who make a call for students to participate before selecting and dividing them into two groups with equal numbers, that is, control and experimental. Given the scientific nature of the program, only members of the experimental group receive the training and the seed capital to establish a business of their choice. STEP was introduced in Kenya in 2012. The initiative to do so was taken by Professor Peter Wanderi, who was at that time the Director of University Partnerships at Kenyatta University. Under his docket was the Chandaria Business Innovation Center, a facility at KU whose role is to nurture young entrepreneurs. He founded the center together with Professor Olive Mugenda, the then Vice Chancellor of KU, and he served as its first director. One of Professor Wanderi's goals when he joined MKU was to introduce STEP so as to equip students with practical skills on entrepreneurship. That goal has come to pass. The university launched the program in January this year. To start with, a team of 10 staff members from MKU and two staff members of the Kenya National Commission for UNESCO were trained on the program for one week. After that, they were certified to start offering the program which ran for 12 weeks. In total, 400 students were picked for the program, 200 were randomly placed in the experimental group and the other 200 in the control group. According to one of the trainers, Mr. Benjamin Afumba, the program was highly interactive and it went a long way in imparting entrepreneurial skills on the participants. At the end of the program, all the participants were awarded certificates. One of the goals of introducing the STEP program at MKU was to assist students in setting up their own small businesses. Going by the testimonials of the participants after its completion, then it was a huge success. Thank you very much. My name is Benjamin Afubo I'm one of the trainers for the STEP program at Mount Kenya University. Our STEP program was uh, a program in collaboration with the Lufana University, and it's a very great program in terms of uh, uh, in 
imparting skills of entrepreneurship to our students. Uh, I want to say that the interaction I had with the students that are trained now was very great. Uh, this was a very practical oriented uh, interaction whereby the, the students are able to get some capital to take them off into their business choices. Uh, it, was had, it, it was through rigorous selection of even the business idea. So that made them to understand on how they can also even identify a business environment to take off. Uh, this was a very great uh, input in terms of uh, giving them a chance to practice. Basically, when I was interacting with the students and even other uh, trainers, we found that uh, students are able to get the tidbits, the small details of business, other than just theoretical what has been given before. Uh, because uh, a student, when he's now handling the money, you'll find that uh, he'll be able to know some of the uh, uh, miscalculations he or she may have made. Um, I found in my class interacting students and they were saying that uh, we started our business with the, a focus of uh, maybe our uh, KDF, that's Mandazi, was costing this much, but along the way the price changed. So you see that if it's theoretical, uh, you'll find that will not be easily to determine whether the business will be profitable or not profitable. But after that interaction with money and the, the source of their, uh, their goods, uh, they were able to determine that uh, there can be fluctu fluctuations and therefore it makes them to control or to keep in mind that there are some risks when they're taking off with the, or when they're handling their businesses. So this practical orientation uh, brings out that bigger picture of uh, a student at a younger age understanding how to run and mega businesses. And I think that's the way to go uh, for the entrepreneurship trainers if we want to change our country. Uh, something I'd like also to appreciate with the program is that uh, uh, there has been also the culture of um, introducing money to students who are in school, it makes them a bit rogue in terms of uh, they divert the cash or they do it for the wrong thing. But I think as a, a country we need to embrace that we need to take through our students as young as they are so that we introduce them to handling money in terms of these transactions and then they'll be able to grow with that idea that they are able to take off with the business early enough. When they integrate this practical knowledge of business with their course they are training in you will find that it will be easier for them to translate their knowledge into actual real jobs. So, which has been a very big gap in the country before. That's why we are talking about that 75% joblessness and so forth. So, in terms of uh, putting together our students so that they can run fast in their field immediately they finish their uh, schooling, then it means we need to introduce to them uh, entrepreneurship to each one of them. I think what I can uh, comment or what I can be able to say for future is that uh, the Commission for University Education that uh, takes care of the curriculum at the higher education level should be able to look at this as a key factor so that it's compulsory that all the courses that are being uh, introduced in the universities, they must carry that a practical aspect of entrepreneurship so that the student can be able to translate their knowledge vis-a-vis -vis the business culture. I think we shall be able to grow very fast in our economy. The participants were divided into groups of five and this helped them to appreciate the value of teamwork in the world of business. However, Dr. Felis Tangero lamented that many people hold the wrong view that entrepreneurship should only be embraced by those who fail academically. They had degree in education master's MBA and a PhD in entrepreneurship. To me, this uh, program, the STEP program, is education in entrepreneurship in a new perspective. Why this is important is because for a long time we have had entrepreneurship in education in Kenya. And as I said, it has been more of theories. To me, this is important because it should inform academic curriculum review, especially to all the tertiary institutions in Kenya, 
and implement more of practicals. One other thing that we have come to find out with this study or with this program is the role of cultural orientation. We came to understand that those students who had a cultural orientation at a very early age, they were able to really embrace this idea. What is meant to be achieved by entrepreneurship education is the change of attitude. For a long time, we have um, had this concept that entrepreneurship activities is for those who are academic dwarfs. And it has for a long time had a negative connotation. Those who did not make it to the university, those who did not make it academically are the ones who get into entrepreneurship. But surprisingly, it has been noted that those who go all the way to, the or to academic lengths or heights, they become the employees of these so-called academic dwarfs. And that is why we need to really look into what is happening. We need to change that attitude so that even those academic giants, they should be able to embrace entrepreneurship. After all, entrepreneurship is the driver of our economy as we see it today. Lillian Makandi, STEP Programs Officer at MKU, emphasized the issue into depth. As well as the STEP program. Uh, the STEP program uh, stands for, it's an acronym for Student Training on Entrepreneurial Promotion. Uh, STEP was developed by UNESCO and Mufana University. It began in Kenya in, uh, at uh, Kenyatta University and uh, it, the program did very well and which Kenyatta University took to some counties, one of them being Kiambu County. And uh, we thought it would also be uh, a good program for our students and we signed an MOU with Rifana University and that's how uh, the program was rolled up in January 2018 in MKU. We've had so far 200 students enrolled for the program uh, which went for 12 weeks. Uh, the program has been very helpful to the students in terms of changing their mindset from job seekers to job creators. Um, we hope that this program is going to, uh, to be held annually. And uh, since the program, the, the program goes for 12 weeks, we intend to carry on uh, with mentorship and training together with our trainers and um, through, throughout the year we are also looking for partners to work with. So far we've approached uh, Kiambu County which will have uh, a department on enterprise development and they are willing to partner with us to help these young people who want to stay ahead businesses outside the university because the businesses that are done uh, within the STEP program are done within the premises of the university. And now we are exposing them to the outside, the world outside there, where they'll be required to to uh, register their businesses wherever they want to set up their businesses. So we are working with the county government. We also want to launch the project, uh, to take the project to other counties because the youths are not, not only found in the universities, we also have youths in the counties and we also want to reach out to them because we think this is a pro uh, this is a program that can help the country solve the problem of unemployment thank you professor wanderi observed that a number of the beneficiaries are training their peers for instance youth groups in the churches thus impacting them with entrepreneurial skills to start with there was an introduction session for all the 400 students who were picked to undertake the program. Nevertheless, by randomly picking numbers, 200 of them were placed in the control group and they got disappointed. That the students who were trained have come to us and they have told us that they have gone to various church groups where they are in youth groups and they have been trained them on aspects of entrepreneurship. You see, this is very good that you do not keep your talent. They have gone to declare themselves, showing their certificates, and they are helping their own peer groups to be better 
and to change the mindset. So the impact, other than to this individual student, it has that effect that a multiplying effect that goes beyond the 136 students who are certified yeah, with the time within the country. In the same breath, Dr. Kirira observed that in the course of the training, the students were busy with their regular classes and continuous assessment tests. The, 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 the program was done when the semester is going on. So students have classes, they have uh, evaluation is going on, cuts. So they have assignments from the classes. So uh, it was a bit of a challenge to ensure that we have all students available if it's on Monday. But uh, the way we overcame that was that we allowed students, we gave the students a leeway of choosing one day in a week, in you know, four days. That helped us to ensure that many students are able to participate. So to me that was the biggest challenge because uh, if we were not able to overcome it, it would have affected the implementation of the program. The other challenge was the fact that um, the university has a policy that does not allow students to do businesses within the university. Uh, so implementing, uh, because step, the, the principle behind is that students have to do businesses meant that we had to go to management and um, request for a waiver of a, a few months that they're able to actually do business within this, the, the institution. And the management was very supportive. They not only allowed us to the students to do businesses, they also ensured that we have we had all the facilities. So we had a training place, we had uh, projectors and in, uh, everything that w was available for us to use. So we were able to overcome the two challenges. In line with the university's policy, students are barred from conducting business within its precinct. In that regard, a waiver had to be provided by the university's management for the participants to set up businesses within its compound. John Kamau is a student at MKU pursuing a Bachelor of Education Arts degree in Kiswahili and Christian Religious Education. Of education arts that is in, in uh, Kiswahili and Sierra. Uh, I'm also one of the ben STEP beneficiaries. Uh, one of the beneficiaries of the STEP program, he was the team leader of a business enterprise christened Real Suppliers. The first day in training, uh, we were introduced to different uh, concepts, uh, maybe sometimes uh, to different concepts about in business and uh, Seed capital has been uh, a great challenge to young people and uh, the trainers that is Bufani University managed to give us 10,000 uh, 10, shillings and we were able to divide among us ourselves that was, uh, in a group of 10, we were in a group of 10 people, we were able to divide them among us ourselves and we engaged in a business that is we were are uh, supplying Bitco Africa products and we started with the nudies. We went ahead and added up, uh, we added more products like uh, we have the detergents uh, and, the, uh, and detergents that is soaps and uh, OMO plus the cleaning detergents uh, such as the jig. And towards the end of it all, we managed to get a profit of uh, 18,405 shillings from the 10,000 shillings that we were given. Ruth Wamboi is a second year student at MKU taking a Bachelor of Commerce degree. Another beneficiary of this step program, she joined hands with her team of six members in setting up Summit Enterprises. And I'm privileged to be one of the first beneficiaries of step program. That is student training at Bruno Promotion. Uh, it started uh, in Mount Kenya University on January and we've been training for three good months and we were expected to choose on a business idea where we were being given real cash to work on so that we can have experience at ground that is 10,000 Kenyan shillings and we're supposed to brainstorm in groups about the business that we're going to work on. In my group we chose since we were being able, we were given the permission to work in Mount Kenya University 
for that um, for that experimental time for three months, we chose to surprise with because it's a favorite snack to the student, and then the student really wanted it, but they, it was not available inside the school, so they had to go outside. So we made it be available near the school since it's portable and easy to sell. And for us, that would make a very profitable idea, and we decided to work on that. Yeah, and for three months, we work, we worked together, and we were able to make a profit of twenty-five thousand the woman can insurance after three months. So for me step has been phenomenal. It has really transformed me first and foremost because it has set me on thinking about entrepreneurship. You know all our lives we were brought up to know all to search or look or look for jobs. But there is that transformation of the mindset, and once we start looking at that, always we we are set on that path. I think we can be great people in the future. And then it has provided a networking platform for me. Um, I've known many entrepreneurs, big people. We have gone to big places. Um, as far as us and my friends and stuff, like the other day we were in UNESCO, which also provided my way forward because. I met a guy who was willing to franchise me um, on an idea where they make uh, uh, on an idea pertaining green and blue entrepreneurship, whereby they make um, construction bricks from waste materials. Martin Otato is a second-year student at MKU pursuing a Bachelor of Business Management degree. He made an eloquent presentation about his business, which was the most profitable during the STEP training program at MKU. Business. Uh, we came up with that name because people, because of the interest of which people had in our product, and we wanted to get them closer to them because they are not new products. They are products that exist, but where they were located were, was not close to the market, and so that is where our business idea came from the opportunity that we saw. So and. Um, we used to operate in this, within the school premises and some, in some instances, in some circumstances outside the school. And um, we made around 40, 44,000 shillings uh, within a, 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 a span of 10 weeks, eight operational weeks, of which we, this came where we did our pricing well because we got a packet at 45 shillings and we sold at 60 shillings making 15 shillings profit per packet. And this really boosted our business. With the, and also we had uh, the coffee business of which we used to spend uh, capital of, you know, we spend an expense of 200 shillings and we made 900 shillings per night. Each night we sold coffee. So we made at least profit of 700 shillings per night of operation. Danson Weaver is an undergraduate student in business management. Another beneficiary of the STEM program, he was the team leader of Onambele Enterprises, a business that was involved in selling sweets and business ice creams. Was Onambele Business Enterprise Limited. We came up with our name of the business simply because we conducted a research on small scale businesses and we found that they dissolute and they come into the end because they lack. Uh, you know, focus and dreams and also vision that they need to achieve. Uh, in our business, we are selling and also supply uh, sweets and and ice creams. So uh, we were selling those products. Our target customers were within the institution where we targeted jewelry occasion, for instance, there are occasions in the university that we call Kilitas Day. We, we would supply sweets and also sell them there. Also, there are also if sports, when we are sports occasions, when the students are watching uh, sports, or maybe World Cup and the other uh, league sports. Eh? So, those were our target customers. And also, I wanted to tell about our competitive advantage of our, of our products was that 
we were able to deliver uh, our products to the nearest places where customers were. For instance, when the students are learning in the villas, we can supply them with our, our sweets and ice creams. We managed to make a profit of 35,000 shillings. Maurice Wambua and Eliud Juguna are undergraduate students in business management at MKU. Together with their three colleagues, they ventured into photography business during the STEP we program. Had, there were a few challenges here and there, so because of the group, the time, the time frame, you no know, dealing with the class and dealing with the photography at the same time, and also trying to balance the class and attending the sessions, which step, wa, 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 the, the step team were really drilling a very, a very good, great session on us, which we could not afford to miss. So we had to try and focus on the, on the step program and at the same time focus on, the, on, the, on our classes. Robin Moremi is an undergraduate student at MKU in Business Information Technology. But you know what? The young man is the chief executive officer of Popcorn Pala with a team of three boys and two girls. Our former business, uh, which was our business, uh, whichever business we actually decided to go into, we were doing flavored popcorns. We had different uh, flavors. Uh, we had around 10 different flavors. We had uh, strawberry, chocolate, mint, and many more and we had so much fun doing our business. Um, our group comprised of around five. Uh, we were actually five students from here at um, Mount Kenya University. Uh, we were three boys, two girls. Uh, actually, the idea came by because uh, one of the girls uh, decided when she was at home, she told us that she actually tried to do something, uh, play around with popcorn. And then uh, she told us she did different flavors, she mixed so many things with it and then she came up with the idea. Then we were asking ourselves, so what can we do with it? Then we came up with the idea of calling ourselves Popcorn Pala, doing different flavored popcorns. Yeah, and then we started selling them because we were given this permission to do the selling here in school. We started selling them here in school, in the boys' hostels, in the girls, in the girls hostels. Then mostly, but then our huge market was out there. Um, uh, along the uh, along the rental houses where the students live and even some houses where the residents around Thika lived. Yeah, so we used to sell them our popcorns. We used to package them in a really beautiful uh, package, though we used to use uh, the plastic cups. Yeah, and um, we came up with a profit. We made a profit of 26,000 shillings where we... Uh, where we restocked our our stock, where we restocked our stock, then we decided to proceed uh, with the selling of our popcorns even after the step program. Yeah, and um, even now, okay, though we are doing our cuts, we are uh, most of us we are just busy. But then uh, maybe next week we'll proceed with doing uh, whatever we are considering, uh, whatever we are doing. Uh, which is selling of the popcorns. Uh, right now, we are actually we are actually looking to register the company so that we could be able to see our products get into the shops, get them into the supermarkets, and even come up with deals with big uh, entertainment companies like IMAX Kenya, where we could sell our popcorns to whoever is going to watch the movies and all that stuff. Having successfully trained the first group of students and arming them with vital entrepreneurial skills, MKU is optimistic that the relationship it has already established with Lufan University will continue. In that breath, since the first phase of the training was held at its main campus in Thika, going forward, the same will be rolled out in other campuses. The university has also approached the Kiambu County Government's Department of Enterprise Development for a partnership that will facilitate the beneficiaries of the program to register and establish businesses within the county. No doubt then, the innovative program is sent to help in addressing the acute shortage of jobs in the country 
and give young people fulfilling livelihoods.